If you're not familiar with the original Neon Genesis Evangelion series, here's the quickest way I could sum it up. There are a bunch of school kids in a post-apocalyptic world, and the government agency called NERV forces them to pilot these giant EVA machines to fight off these cosmic monsters that keep attacking. How's that? Obviously, there's more to it, including an unflinching look at clinical depression. It's almost impossible to talk about this show without bringing up the creator, Hideaki Anno, and his own struggles with depression. It seeped right into his characters. Shinji, who's bottling all sorts of abandonment trauma and general feelings of worthlessness. Asuka, who's out running a traumatic childhood event and channels those feelings into outbursts. And Rei, who's been sheltered from the world and doesn't know how to act around other children. And every adult in these kids' lives is either too busy to care for their mental well-being, or too immature themselves to notice. And while all this is going on, the kids are going through puberty, and new feelings are emerging that they don't fully understand. Most of the series can be very, very brutal. It's a downer. So what if we just took all that heavy depression stuff out of the story? Just forget it. <laughs> All of that was my long-winded intro to Neon Genesis Evangelion Girlfriend of Steel 2nd, a romantic visual novel video game by Gainax, released in Japan in 2005 on the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable. It's an Evangelion spin-off that doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's one of many forms of media from the Evangelion multiverse that retcons things to make the story all about the school life, and the love triangle, and copious amounts of sexual tension. Alright, let's start the game with the prologue. Right out of the gate! Right out of the fucking gate! I should not be making this video. Shinji and Asuka are riding a bike made for two, and Asuka's already yelling at Shinji while the FBI pounds on my front door. Later on, we're in Shinji's house and we get to walk around and explore and his mom's there! Yeah, unlike the original series, Shinji's mom is alive in this game, isn't that nice? Look at these options! So, since Shinji's mom is alive, that means he doesn't have to pilot the Eva, right? WRONG! She suits him up and tells him he'll be a pilot! Get in the robot, Shinji! It's your destiny across the entire multiverse! Chapter 1 is titled, Fun School Life. Asuka wakes Shinji for school and they race there together, meeting up with friends along the way. Rei, the new girl, is also racing for school, and she bumps into Shinji, solidifying what we in the States refer to as a meet-cute. Of course this Rei is different from the series, more like an average girl. A girl also giving Shinji shit, because he can't go two steps without being accused of perving on someone in this world. You get to look around the school some, and Shinji and Asuka even share a sweet little moment. And you get to chat with other characters. And you go everywhere and talk to everyone, hoping to find whatever conversation triggers the game to move forward with the story. There's your teacher, Masato. And in this game, Ritsuko is the school nurse. And then there's Kaoru. Okay, so as I said earlier, this game is a visual novel, and through it, you make choices for Shinji, and those choices will lead to different endings. Some choices will cut the game short. Others have Shinji winding up in different relationships, and for that, Shinji is torn between Asuka, Rei, and Kaoru. So throughout the game, you'll see him having little romantic moments with all three. School finally begins, and Masato introduces the new transfer student, Rei. Rei immediately calls Shinji out for the incident earlier, right in front of the class. But Asuka stands up for him, and the two go at it. In my school, we talked about The Simpsons and exchanged video game cheat codes, but this is cool too. I go back to the infirmary, and Nurse Ritsuko tells me that she loves my dad. Damn, Nurse, I just wanted to know if I had COVID or not. Anyway, back to wandering the school, and be sure not to go into the room where the girls are changing for gym class, or the game will end! <laughs> With Shinji homeless and lost, what?! Back at school, the boys talk about boobs, and you know what? I can confirm this is a realistic conversation for boys. We suck, I know. But counterpoint, boobs! 
The kids get invited to the research institute, and you have to choose who Shinji will be heading over there with. I'm choosing Asuka, but Shinji can't find her right away. And when he does, she looks like me after editing a YouTube video. You take a train, and Asuka makes you make all these other stops first. There's a cute scene with some pen pens! Finally, all the kids get to the research center where they're suited up, and they're given a tour around Nerve. You can then wander around and take the elevator wherever, and hey, you might run into Shinji's dad, Gendo, who in the show is a real source of Shinji's pain and trauma. Here, if you decide to talk to Gendo, you trigger a game ending where the two of you live together deep in the mountains, happily ever after as lumberjacks. And I mean, I should stop playing here, right? This is really everything Shinji's ever wanted. How can there be a happier ending than this? If you ignore your dad, you get to suit up and see the giant robots. Kensuke sneaks a picture with his camera. <laughs> Shinji sits in a cockpit for a bit and rather enjoys it. Later, Asuka asks for a commemorative photo. Uh, okay, sure, no problem. Then she... strips... and asks for another picture... It's not even my camera! Well, happy birthday, Kensuke! There's a version of this where it's Rei who asks for the picture, but she keeps her clothes on because you have to pay on OnlyFans to see her goods, Shinji. Oh, and if you take the picture with Kaoru, everything seems fine and innocent. Unless you notice where Kaoru's hand is. Hey, keep your paws above the equator, mister! Now I'm just wandering around town, doing some shopping. Then Asuka invites herself over to watch some TV at my place. She's watching... God knows what. I hope it's not End of Evangelion. Shinji's on the computer, probably looking up naked Asuka cosplayers. Asuka gets bored and decides, sex! And that's the secret, boys! You just bore the woman to death! It's worked for me... never. And then his mom comes home! Hi. Mom! I forgot you're alive in this universe! On to the adventures of Shinji and friends. Shinji wanders around the school for a bit and then finds the girls in their gym uniforms talking exactly like girls do. But Shinji says seeing them this way, he feels nothing. Asuka kicks Shinji in the face, but Kaoru is there to work his magic again. Let's just stop this game of cat and mouse and get to business already. Shit or get off the pot, you two. I need to get off the pot. Look at all these fucking friends objecting to Shinji's new lifestyle. Fuck you all, don't you want your friend to be happy? Judgmental pricks, get in the robots and die. Nah, they're just jealous because everyone in this game wants to fuck Shinji. Case in point, the group does some training and everyone runs ahead of Shinji. He stands alone, has some deep thoughts, and then passes out, only to wake up naked with Masato hovering over him. You walk around the school again and gather the kids, because you're all going to go explore a cave. And this part of the game is relatively long, and yet, there's not a whole lot to say about it. They have their usual group dynamics, and then you just navigate them around the tunnels. Lots of little flirtations, a little hand-holding. Then you find an elevator, and you have to pick who to ride with. If you pick Asuka, the two actually have a genuine moment. Like, one Shinji is also into. If you choose Rei, she gets scared and grabs you, but she's not really acting all into Shinji, to be honest. But if you choose Kaoru...
Or instead, drink some muddy water and then get explosive diarrhea. Masato gives them a ride and everyone goes home one by one, hopefully to learn how to masturbate, because everyone in this game needs a fucking release already. All of them. Chapter 3, Love Strategies. Shinji finds out he's gonna be home alone for the night, so of course Asuka invites herself over to stay with him. Oh, and I almost forgot. Ritsuko calls Shinji into the nurse's office to give her a shoulder rub. You know, the adult who confessed to loving his dad? What the hell game is she playing? Maybe Masato told her about Shinji's giant dick. Now you have a choice. Go to this concert, or spend time with Asuka. If you choose Asuka, you go out and shop for ingredients, run into some friends, then something weird happens. I know, a lot of weird things have happened, but bear with me. Back at home, Shinji walks in on Asuka changing, and you have the option to attack her. Like, fucking sexually assault her. Asuka's pissed that Shinji's got no chill, and kicks him in the fucking nuts, deservedly so. That's for the beginning of End of Evangelion, you fucking sicko. She kicked him so hard that he passes out for a week, and was discharged from nerve, and now he's back to a homeless wanderer. Fuck, if only America had justice this swift. Anyways, if you choose not to attack Asuka, you have a lovely pan-fried dumpling double date. Dumpling Double Date was the name of my high school band. Chapter 5, Night Together. So we're hanging around watching TV again, and we all know it's just a matter of time before Asuka- Yep, there she goes! She wants to take a bath together! Not so fast, YouTube demonetization! We're both in our bathing suits! Actually, this turns into a sweet and sincere moment between the two, and they share a bed, but both happily fall asleep. That's nice. Now, obviously, I'm not showing you every path and outcome in this game, but it's worth rewinding a little bit to see what happens if Shinji chooses to perform in the concert instead of hang out with Asuka. You would think this plot would be all about Kaoru, but it's actually Rei who develops the hots for Shinji here. It's the outfit he's wearing. Seeing Shinji dressed up is making Rei really hot and heavy. It's like the game became an ad for Men's Warehouse. Later on, you have to choose which of these two to spend time with. Choose Rei and it's off to the beach, where the two actually have some chemistry and admit feelings for each other. Damn, Shinji, this whole time all you had to do was put a fucking bow tie on. Choose Kaoru and... Well, let's just say Kaoru prefers Shinji out of the suit. Chapter 6, Adult's Paradise. Oh god, what does that even mean? Am I about to be molested by all my teachers again? It actually starts with Evangelion pilot stuff. Like, the mecha plot, and nerve, and that stuff. Look, it's Jean Jacket from the movie Nope. But just when it looks like there's gonna be some action, everyone just waiting around back to their conversations about who gets to bang Shinji first. Jesus, you would think Shinji shoots loads made out of liquid gold, but we all know that's not true, don't we? Asuka gets mad, that's a first. You get to wander around the headquarters again and look at the robots, and you find out that Asuka took her unit out to wage war on watermelons. Shinji takes his unit out to apologize, and as well as you might have guessed. Really, this game will just take any excuse to get Shinji naked again. Masato gives Shinji a ride home, and I'm legit terrified what she's gonna do to him next. Looks like the students are evacuating the city, and Masato takes responsibility for Shinji. Asuka finds out about Masato taking Shinji, and she flips out. But luckily her ride is Kanji, so she can settle into her normal horny teen role now. It ends with awkward talk with the four of them at Masato's place, and honestly, I'm surprised it was just an awkward talk, and not the adults busting out a video camera and egging the teens on to make a movie, wink wink. The final chapter is chapter 7, The Last Battle. The Last Battle? I don't remember having a first battle!
Not much gameplay here. It's mostly watching the game trying to squeeze in all this Evangelion lore it barely included up until this point. No decision prompts here. After all this exposition, we go straight into the finale. Until we meet again. We're all heroes! We get a parade! There's no end of the world instrumentality nonsense here. Get out of here with that! And now everyone's gonna be sent to different research institutes around the world. Everyone pals around for some food. There's dancing, including one last moment of Asuka being a jealous lunatic since Shinji is dancing with Rei. Oh, those kids. Finally, you get a prompt, and it's decision time. Stay with Asuka, or go with Rei. Hey, somebody's missing from this decision. You mean I can't choose to be with the one person who didn't play games with me? Who was respectful and direct and never once started any shit with me? I have to settle with one of these abusers? This game really is like real life. If you choose Asuka, you finally get to play swords with your tongues. Asuka is supposed to leave for Germany, but she hugs Shinji so tight he gets stuck on the boat with her. And I can only imagine what these two are gonna grow into. If you choose Rei, the two lovebirds take an Eva unit on a joyride to a beach. Shinji says goodbye to Asuka before Rei goes in for the kill. And then the story jumps ahead 10 years where you just had a baby, so I guess before this was 9 years of nothing but lustful SEX! It kind of feels like this is the happier ending. Until you remember that Rei is sort of a copy of Shinji's mom. <laughs> Robo Shinji! How did I forget to mention the ending with Robo Shinji? What could I even say about Robo Shinji besides... I want a toy of it.